Hey guys, it's Cal from The Lighting Doctor here. Thanks to everybody over the last few months who's purchased our do-it-yourself kits and sharing your pictures of the finished project with us. We really appreciate it. And for everybody who's been getting your free consultations and sending us pictures of your property so that we can help you best utilize our do-it-yourself kits and show you how to do it. And that's what this video is gonna be about is I'm gonna walk you through a free consultation that I did for Ethan. And thank you, Ethan, for letting us share these pictures and this consultation uh, with everybody and what I'm going to do is walk you through what we would do on his property so you can see what you're going to get in a free consultation as well as hopefully it sparks some ideas for you some things that you can do with lighting on your property whether it's with our do-it-yourself kits or whether it's with some other lights that you buy online we just want you to best utilize those and make your property look as good as possible and whether you buy our kits or someone else's please Feel free to share those pictures and send those pictures to us of what the finished project looks like. Uh, we like, we love seeing the before and after pictures of landscape lighting projects. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. Please email me your comments and questions at cal at lightingdoctor.ca or give me a shout if you want your free consultation at one 471 8 and enjoy this video. So here we have a great property for some landscape lighting. Now, bear in mind, there's a lot of different ways to do any project. Uh, I'm going to give you uh, my best recommendations. The best thing that you can do when sending in your pictures and uh, looking for a lighting consultation is give me some ideas of what you're looking for. Maybe a budget that you have in mind, some key areas that you want to focus on because obviously every property is going to be different and I might recommend some things uh, slightly different than what you're looking for, which is not always a bad thing. But um, in a lot of cases too, you know, I might look at a lot of different areas that you don't see. And what I recommend is far exceeded the budget that you'd expected. So give me some type of budget to work within as well. And we can very easily help you design a system. So this was a great property. Uh, thanks to Ethan for letting us use these pictures and walk you through it and show you what we're going to do here. So first thing I'm going to do is you know, obviously, uh, this is a fall picture. There's not much leaves on the on the trees. Um, and any of these little trees like this, I usually leave it to your discretion. If you had to cut lights out based on price, this would be an area that maybe you don't want to highlight. But if you have the money, I would suggest, especially from the street side, trying to get a small upper accent light on these trees because when they do have foliage on them, they are going to look very good. So, I mean, there is a few of those in the front of the property that you could definitely highlight but if you're looking for an area to cut back on some lights that would probably be what i'd recommend the area i would focus most on this project is the front of the house i think that's more one of the most underutilized areas that most people will look at most people just look at trees and most landscapers just look at trees and throw lights on those when um, really you should be highlighting the house because that's the best feature that most homes have that can really make things stand out. So what I would probably do here, especially because they have this great brickwork, is I would use one of two things. You can either use an accent light or a wash light. Now what a wash light is, is it just produces a wider angle spread um, that a lot of times you're going to want to use on a front of house. But just bear in mind that those lights do cost um, quite a bit more than a standard accent light. So you can still achieve very close to the same effect uh, if budget is an issue by using just the accent light to shine up here. And what I would probably try and do is almost get it over here and have it shine kind of towards the peaks on both sides. And you're gonna get some nice uh, shadowing and shading off the brick as well as kind of light to the top of the house here. And that's gonna produce a lot of extra light in this bed here so that maybe you can totally avoid having to put any path and garden lights in there. Uh, if you wanted to, you still could, but because you're doing that with the light, you will get some reflection back and it's a great economical way to light that whole area. And then same thing on this side of the house, I would do the same uh, with the accent lights. For this side, I probably would use accent lights that have a slightly narrower beam uh, and have one kind of shining up in here, have one right up the center here, and then again, another one over here. And I would do the same thing. There's a bed in the front here, but that would help uh, avoid a bunch of path lights in that area because we are getting some light off the house. Uh, what I would do, because there is steps here, this would be one area that I would want to light um, just to provide some light so that at night when you are walking up you can see those steps. Two ways I would do this is one, I would either use path lighting here 
and maybe just stagger it every second one or wherever there's a step. Again, just for cost effectiveness, you could put one at every level, but if you're looking to save some money and don't want to light things up too, too much, you can definitely just stagger them and have one here, one here, and then one up here would do a really good job of lighting those stairs. Another way of doing it, uh, which I did suggest in this project because it would look really cool as you have this beautiful rock wall here. I would try and highlight that with some uh, hardscape lights or wall lights that kind of tuck just under the crack here and then they actually shine down and it gives you a, a pretty wide angle. So I'd maybe try and put one, you know, up in here, you know, maybe eight to 10 feet uh, further out and then another one over here and probably even over here and do this whole wall because now not only are we going to light the steps, but we're also going to light up the wall. And with this one, again, we're going to light up this wall as well as all this down here with one light as opposed to maybe having to put one or two uh, spotlight or accent lights up there to shine uh, either down on the foliage or up on the wall. So that's what I would do for the front of this house. Now you could, if you wanted to, add maybe a, a spotlight in here. As you'll see in other pictures, it is a big area. Um, but I don't think you necessarily need to. And what I would say is start with what I suggested and you can always add on down the road. The beauty with LED is it gives you a lot of design flexibility and a lot of room to add lights on later on. So um, again, you know, we talked about this area and, and this area and how I would light that. We talked about the front of the house. Um, what I would probably do here, and I love this property because it's got about four of these really, really big trees. As a, again, there's a bunch of different ways that you can light this. My favorite way to light it is actually with down lighting um, and getting some, whether it be a hanging light that you can hang up in the crooks that shines down. Uh, the reason I like that is because it's still going to light up a lot of the trunk as well as give you a lot of extra light down here. And in the winter when there's not a lot of leaves, that light shines through the branches and gives you some really cool shadows. Uh, year round. So I like that effect. It's a really cool effect with either a hanging light or you can use a, a down light or you know you can even cheat a little bit and use an accent light. As long as it's a good quality one with a good seal, um, you can still get that you know up on one of the thicker branches and have that shining down. We do have special tree stakes that are very easy to use and very easy to mount. The only tricky part with that is it is more work to get the wire up in there. Um, you also, there's more maintenance because as that tree grows, you got to make sure that you're leaving room uh, for that wire to grow. Uh, that's a whole nother topic. I'm, I'm not going to get into that, but it is very simple to do to make sure um, that that wire can grow with the tree. And there are some tips that you can, you can take uh, to make that a little bit easier. But that would be one way. Another really way, if, if you don't want to have to climb up in a tree and put lights and stuff, is just uh, lighten it again from down below, but because this is such a big tree, it's going to take more than one light to do a really, really good job. And what I suggested in this one and with a lot of these is at least three to four lights. And how I would do that is I would probably have one kind of close to the base here, uh, an up and accent light that would just shine almost straight up so that we get this trunk and really highlight that. And then some outer lights a little further out that are going to kind of shoot up into the canopy and get a bunch of light down in there as well as maybe one in the back so that not only you see it from the street side but maybe you also see it uh, from the house if you have a light down there that's going to light up in the in the foliage so with any of these bigger trees you're probably looking at more than one light but uh, again if if uh, cost or money is an issue I mean you could also light this very well with just two up or accent lights right up this way uh, it would look really good from the street or one in the front and one in the back so that way you have a nice view from the street as well as from your home. It just depends really where you want to see these trees from. Uh, here we're moving into the backyard. So you can see uh, here that there's a huge um, landscaped mulch area that you could, you know, some people will litter that with uh, path and garden lights, um, but I don't think you necessarily have to. I'll, I'll give you a couple ideas. Uh, and a couple examples and a lot of this stuff is still fairly new landscape so again as this stuff grows and you can see there's different plant material or things that you want to accent um, then you can do that later too again you can always add on to your system later just make sure when you're doing it originally you plan for that how do you plan for that uh, make sure you size your transformer larger than you need to 
and make sure you're leaving extra wire in the ground. So whether it be extra loops at every light or different kind of junction areas that potentially you might want to, you know, throw some lights in down the road. Well, maybe you leave a big loop in here and, and some type of little junction box or something over it so that when the day comes and you want to add lights, you know where that extra wire is that you can tap into and just add on to your existing system instead of have to run all new wire back to the transformer, wherever that might be. Um, so again, I'll give you a couple ideas uh, and then what we actually decided to do in this one. But again, because you have the rock wall here, you could use those um, those hardscape lights and just, you know, really spread them out. You don't need to light the whole wall, but just in certain areas. So, you know, maybe one in here, one in here, one in here. I mean, maybe six, seven, eight of them, I think, would still do a really good job. Uh, but that is a lot of lights. I probably wouldn't do a lot back here yet until this stuff starts to grow. But another area too, or another thing you could do as well is just have path lights up here because they're going to, you know, and spread them out close to the wall because they're going to shine down on that wall as well and probably spend a lot of money on this wall so it is an area that you probably want to highlight and again you've got a nice big beautiful tree back here i would do the same thing as we talked about in the front is probably trying to get a light right in here somewhere that shines up and accents it and then surround the tree with a couple more accent lights to really get into that canopy and the foliage and create a great effect once you start getting leaves on that tree. Um, if we keep moving on, uh, and this is an area that, you know, you can do different things, but right back here. So what a lot of people will do is just put, you know, a couple, maybe two, three path lights in here, which is a good, uh, a good option. And it's going to give you some light down on the lawn and stuff. Uh, what I like doing, and this is just a preference thing, but I like using a, an upper and accent light and shining it right up on these pillars. The reason for that is one, I just I think it looks better. Plus, uh, you get a lot of reflection down on these troughs. That's going to do a really good job of lighting this whole area anyway. Um, just a personal preference thing, but uh, whatever you like works. Uh, the problem I find with path lights is they're just they're there's a better chance they're going to get knocked over. Um, they just they do require a little maintenance because they're sitting higher up. It's easier for them to get shifted, even if you really, um, you know cemented them in there really well again depending on where you live where we live in northern alberta where the frost heaves in the ground are pretty significant um, those lights are going to shift over time that's just the reality of it and i just find with up and accent lights not that you're never going to have to adjust them uh, there's just there's less adjustments and maintenance that need to be done um, you know i kind of again talked about this but this is where you know i'd probably have my upper accent light shining up here and then i would surround this tree with you know maybe one, I wouldn't even put one here. I'd probably put one kind of more on the side here, one kind of more on the side there, and then potentially put one back here because, again, once you have leaves on this, you're going to get a lot of light reflected back down on this whole area. Uh, so it's an easy way to light an area without having to throw a bunch of extra lights. Um, and a lot of the uh, rest of the property here is going to be a little bit redundant, so I'll just talk about a couple last little issues. But in the back here, this would be an area, uh, you know, it's too bad the air conditioner is there, but I mean, you work with that. And what I would probably do here is again, either um, a wash light, uh, a wash light just has a wider spread that you can use to light this area. Just keep this in mind that anytime you widen the angle of a beam to be wider, it's not going to go as high up. So to use a, a regular four and a half watt wash light will do a really good job to light all this, but it might not get all the way to the top here so another option is just get a bigger wash light or uh, in this case maybe potentially accenting this wall with two accent lights instead of one wash light in the middle so that's an option also uh, i'll just quickly go through again this is another great big tree in the back here that i would love to highlight a couple ways again this would be a great one to have some hanging lights up in the crooks of the branches in a couple different areas because it would do a really good job of lighting all the uh, ground foliage here. Or again, you just surround the light, uh, surround the tree with some lights here, over here, and over here that shine up into that foliage. Uh, will again give you a really good effect because now they're going to light from a, from below. But when there's leaves on it, it's also going to reflect back down onto the ground cover and give you. Uh, a really, really nice look.
So that's pretty much it. Um, you know, the only other thing I'd suggest on this property is in this area, it could be potentially an area that you want to maybe put some path lights uh, just to accent that. Another way you could do this, again, it's a little bit more work because you got to worry about tucking and hiding the wire. But with those uh, wall lights or those flat um, hardscape lights that I talked about, even getting them up just kind of in this area of the fence in a couple different areas is really cool too because it looks good on the fence as well as it lights all the ground cover. So that's another suggestion, but just bear in mind, it is a little bit more work to do that. Um, and that pretty much wraps up. We've talked about uh, pretty much all the areas on this property and hopefully that helps. So when you send me uh, your pictures and you're looking for a free consultation, this is what you're gonna get. I'm gonna send you a video back like this with some suggestions. It would probably be a slightly shorter video um, but I will give you an idea of some different things to look at. If you have a budget in mind, let me know. For example, when I first looked at this property, because it is a pretty big property and a lot of landscaping was done, you know, we were upwards somewhere around 60 lights to do everything that I thought would look really good on this property, which I haven't talked about everything yet. Um, but he kind of gave me a budget in mind and we found some really creative ways and some things that we could do with only 35 lights that would still, you know, take out a couple areas, but it would highlight some of the key areas that they really wanted. So, uh Once you have your lights assembled, the next step is starting to place your lights. We recommend using a rubber mallet when you have a good ground stake and pounding that in to really get that light nice and stable so that it doesn't get knocked over or banged up down the road. Once you've got your light installed, the next step is going around and placing your wire at every fixture. Be sure to leave extra wire at every fixture just in case you need to make future changes. The next step is stripping your wire and getting it ready to wire. It can very easily be done using wire cutters or wire strippers and then wiring your fixtures using waterproof gel filled connections. This is very important because cheap connections will lead to all kinds of problems down the road. These are called BVS2 snap lock connectors or very easy to use, they're gel filled and hold the wires together nice and strong so that you're not having to repair wires on a year-to-year -year basis. Another good option is something called a DBRY connection. Also used if you have to tee off or splice into your wire, definitely use these. It comes in two parts, a marette that holds the wires tight and then a gel-filled tube to keep them waterproof. Please stay away from the do-it-yourself uh, wire connectors that you see at your Home Depots and Canadian tires that pierce the wire because when you pierce the wire there's just that much more chance that you're gonna have errors down the road. A question I get asked all the time is how do I know what size transformer to use? Very simply add up the wattage of all the lights on your project. If you're using a 5 watt light and you've got 10 of them that's a total of 50 watts. A general rule of thumb is to size your transformer 20% larger than what you actually need. So if you need 50 watts total, sizing it 20% larger, you would want to use a 60 watt transformer or larger. This is an example of a Kitchler transformer that comes with a photo cell to turn your lights on and off with dusk and dawn, as well as is simple and very, to use, very easy to use timer. Once you've selected your transformer, the next step is hooking up and wiring all your lights to the transformer and you usually find two taps on the bottom, one for a common connection and one for a 12 volt or 15 volt connection. Wire those in, mount your transformer, plug it into your GFCI receptacle, turn it on and you're good to go. If you want to easily make, turn your transformer into a Wi-Fi transformer, we highly recommend using the Weon Outdoor Wi-Fi Timer. Just basically plug your transformer into it and set your timer and you're good to go. And the final step, once you know all your lights are working, is burying the wire. By making a small trench with a flat-ended shovel, pushing the wire down six to eight inches, stomping everything down nice and clean, and you're done.